Costume. It's Stephanie, Ms. Oso Crafting. Welcome back, or hello if you're new. So it's today is Friday, May 27th at about 2 o'clock p.m. And this is a little later than I intended to record. The reason for that is I got really sucked into my stitching project that I was working on last weekend, so I worked on it a bit farther until I felt ready to show it. Anyway, well, I have a lot of stuff to show you today, so if you're the type of person who likes to see a gazillion projects, this is your video. <laughs> so today I'm going to do a whip update. I'm going to do a wrap up of my all my mania stuff, and I have a little stitchy haul to share, and I have a, a couple, I have one FO and one FFO, so let's get started. So I think first what I'll do is I'll show you my... Uh, my current whips. So I made this uh, binder here. It's full of uh, page protectors with patterns inside. I just have like so many, you know, whips now that I need more organization, you know? So, so the first thing that I worked on after Mania, I finished. So we'll uh, share that a bit later. But after that, I worked on Love of the Capital L by Papillon Creations. That's what it's supposed to look like when finished. And I will insert a pic of my previous progress. So what I did this time is I worked on page nine. Here's where I am now. Back up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. So all um, this business over here. This little piece took forever to stitch. A lot of stitches in there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and this is being stitched on 25 count vintage antique white Lugana, one over one, Gloriana silk floss, three colors, crimson, copper, and pumpkin. And it's, it's coming along, so yeah, what I had to do was I had to finish up the, the evil, the truth, and this business, which was kind of tedious. I like to think of it as like the, the pretzel, because that's what it reminded me of when I was stitching it. And then the uh, Always Trust, I finished up that part. And then this part, like I mentioned, and of course the border over here. I started the border during Mania, and then I finished it when I worked on it after Mania. So pretty happy with that. And I'm getting kind of sick of this project. I'm looking forward to the uh, finish line, hoping to finish it by November. So, okay, so after. Love with a capital L, I worked on Air Goddess by Joan Elliott. Here's what it's supposed to look like. And I'm hoping to finish this project by the middle of the year, so June 30th. And I did work on it a bit during Mania. Here's where I am now. So she is uh, pretty close to finished. All I need to do is backstitch the top half and add the beads. So during Mania, what I did was these swirls down here, some of them. And then when I took it out recently, I did all the rest of the swirls. These swirls are in this Krennic thread that's discontinued. And man, it's, it, is a, it is a pain to stitch. Compared to like the other Krennic in this pattern, the, um, the one used for these swirls was like really stiff and difficult. Maybe that's why they discontinued it. So this is stitched on 32 count Ariel Belfast by Picture This Plus. So I, I did the uh, swirls, and then I did like her um, her upper body, everything from here up, basically. So her finished her hair, and did her finished her arms, and did her chest and her face and all that, and then a little bit more of this wrap business up here. A lot of fractionals in there, but a lot of fun to stitch. So I, I'm really loving it, and I think I'm going to try to finish it with the rest of uh, May if I can. So it's kind of a busy weekend coming up, but I'll see what I can do. And like I said, backstitching and beads, but I've already backstitched most of the bottom half. There's a little bit more that goes down here, like um, swirls. And I couldn't do that before because it goes over these uh, cross stitch swirls. So I have to do that and then everything on the top half, but I think that'll be fun because the backstitching will really make her come alive, you know, when I put in like all her facial features and all that. So I'm looking forward to it. And after I finish this, I will be starting Earth Goddess 
Maybe not right away, but certainly this year. And then I will get into my FFO now, because that was the first thing I did after Mania, and I will insert a video clip showing that here. Hey Floss Tube, it's Stephanie, and I wanted to share my very recent FFO. I did this tonight, so not only did I frame it tonight, I had two graduations tomorrow. I also wound up ripping and redoing a little bit and adding some. See, today in the mail I received a graduation announcement indicating that she was graduating summa cum laude and, you know, with highest honors. So that is so cool. I'm very proud of her, and I wanted to put that on the piece. So I did, and then the problem was is this square where the lamp of learning is situated. It per, Before it was centered over the two lines of text, but then there was a third line and it didn't look right. It was too high, so I had to do some rip, ripping and redoing of that. <laughs> but it, it didn't take too long, less than an hour, and uh, of course the, the framing. So I got this frame at Frame Masters and it was off their clearance shelf and they cut me a little piece of glass to match. It, the frame size is 7 by 9 so, and it being clearance and everything, I paid a grand total of $15 for the frame and glass both. That's pretty darn good for a wood frame, you know? And this one, it's like a, a warm sort of like chestnut kind of and it has this nice like detail, like little like periodic like stripes almost and it has some dimension to it it's higher here and lower here it kind of picks up the warm tones in the books so I like that and I just I wanted something you know neutral for her and this is a relatively small project and I wanted to keep it small so for that reason you know I didn't mat it I didn't think it needed a mat so I'll get into more of my <laughs> decision making about mats and everything when I do my framing tutorial, which it's in the pipeline. Please believe me. I just, I couldn't do it tonight because this was a rush job, you know? So, but I will do it within the next few months. So I'm really happy with that, this, and I hope that she loves it. All right, back to the main video. Bye. So after working on the graduation piece, I picked up Lipton by Nora Corbett because I was so close to finish, <laughs> and I finished it. So I did a little bit during Mania. I started beading him. I beaded like the uh, bottom half here basically, and then after Mania I finished off the beads, filled in a few missing stitches, did a teeny bit of back stitching, and then back stitched this at the bottom, Lipton. I just want to have them all labeled. I'm planning to hang them all together on the wall. So this is stitched on 32 count Opal Belfast in the pewter colorway by Picture This Plus. Try to get in close. See all those lovely beads? I love the uh, snowflake beads, like the groups of five. I think that's really cute. And I love the uh, crystal, huge crystal bling on his ribbon. That's really cool. And I had a, I had a hard time with that, with the name. Took a little while to figure out how to space it and everything, especially as I was using two strands. I wanted it to really stand out, but I'm happy with it now. So I did start uh, one of his other one of the other reindeer during Mania, but I'll get to that in a minute. So very happy with this nice little finish. I mean, he's not very big; just about like five inches wide by six and a half tall, I think. But uh, I'm planning to hang them all together, and I'll hang I, some of them together like in one frame, but in a mat with multiple openings. I think that's what I'm going to do. So It will be cool. And he's just so like sparkly and blingy. I mean, I always liked the pattern, that's why I stitched it. But once I started like adding the beads, I was like, oh, I'm so in love. I just love the bling, you know? So he was a lot of fun to do, and I'm looking forward to doing the others. Okay, so now we'll get into Mania, and I'll try to make this snappy because some of you have probably already watched my vlogs. So what I did is I started five new projects. I gave each of them between two and four days efforts on the scroll bars, and then I also worked on ten older projects. So the first thing I started was Celtic Autumn, and I will insert a pic of the, um, the pattern 
and I'm stitching it on 28 count a vintage country mocha cashel by Zweigart. So I'm doing a color conversion, obviously. The, the color conversion is by Little Cat originally, and I got all the details from Janet Granger via her blog. So what I, I started at the waist up here, and which is like the center, and I worked on the, um, the skirt. This is kind of like the upper half of the skirt. This is the bottom of the page on my working copy. And then I did this border business over here. So it was a lot of fun to stitch. Loving these colors, very pretty. I will work on her again, I think, in August. And I'm gonna try to finish her next year. I'll try to do the bulk of the stitching this year and then have a pretty like easy time finishing her off next year. And then I'll start winter. <laughs> I worked on Celtic Autumn for four days. The next thing I started was Dancer by Nora Corbett. I, let's see, the pattern, sorry. <laughs> Here's the pattern. And I'm stitching him on the same fabric I used for the other ones. So this is 32 Opal Dolphins in the cuter colorway by Picture This Plus. Here's my start. This was uh, two days, I think, two days work on him. And he was a lot of fun. I just love that sassy pose. I plan to work on him again in July and maybe even finish him off. I definitely want to finish him this year. So I plan to give him a whole week in July and that, that may be enough time to finish him. We'll see. This is like pretty much the bottom half of the chart. So it was a lot of fun. Actually, that's not true. I lied. <laughs> there's, there's more on the bottom. There's like a snowy ground business. And of course, there's more trees over here. So, but I mean, really, it's not that much stitching. Get a little closer. Yeah. I showed this to my friend Katie, and she was, she thought that uh, Dancer must be a girl with that, you know, dancey pose. So maybe it's a she. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? So, it's cool. <laughs> and then the next thing I started after that was the Summer uh, Bell Pull by Stony Creek. I'm from the Winter 2016 Stony Creek Magazine. I will insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like. So I'm stitching this on Anne Cloth, uh, MCG Textiles Afghan, which I cut myself into like a bell pull size. 18 count fabric so I worked on this for well three days but only two of them count because I had to frog everything I did on the first night I spaced it wrong and I was so tired when I started this project physically uh, mentally emotionally everything so just don't do it <laughs> don't stitch especially don't start a new project when you're like that just go to bed and wait until you have more mental faculties, I guess would be my advice. So I stitched the uh, the S and all this greenery and the cattails. The greenery was a pain. That was like five, four or five different colors of green. So you can see the canoe outline pretty well. <laughs> and then there's a couple of frogs that have to go up there. Actual frogs, not like, you know, not frogging, but actual frogs. <laughs> and some flowers as well that'll go like here and here. And then the next block, I did the, started the border for the U block. So this project, I was kind of like, I don't know why, but I thought it would be a quick stitch. And I don't know why I was thinking that. I must have been crazy. I mean, it's like almost 100 wide by almost 500 tall. So <laughs> the stitch count, it's not a small thing. And there's four of them. I want to do, you know, all four of the, uh, the seasons. So... I am using the DMC. For this one especially, I looked at the uh, the photograph closely, but I just didn't see a whole lot of variegation where in the parts where the weeks was called for, so why spend the money, you know, I'll just use the DMC. <laughs> so my plan for this is to work on it basically whenever I can <laughs> in between my other projects, and I will see if I can finish it by like Labor Day, but don't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> I did want to get through all these patterns in a reasonable time frame, but it's just a lot of stitching and I'm not sure and I'm definitely not going to start any other um, of the seasonal bell poles until this one is finished, so we will see. Okay, take two. I'm having some technical difficulties and I lost a bunch of footage, kind of a bummer, but here we go again. So the fourth project I started during Mania was... The Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. I will insert a photograph. 
I worked on him four days, and this is stitched on 32 count Balfus in the dwarf colorway by Picture This Plus. I absolutely love stitching this project. The, the colors are so just rich, lovely Christmas reds, and it's pretty easy stitch so far. And the fabric is fun to stitch on. I worked on the bottom left quadrant, pretty much almost that bottom left of the chart is almost done. And I did work over to the left edge of the uh, piece, which was nice because this is a, a fat eighth of fabric and I knew it would fit, but I it's nice just to see that I have like an inch and a half over here to do the framing, whatever, that's enough. There's more space uh, lengthwise, that will be no problem. So I do really love stitching on this project and I will bring it out again in July and give him a full week's worth of effort. Hopefully I can finish him this year, we'll see. So the last thing that I started during Mania was the Mill Hill Angelina ornament. That's what this that's what it looks like. A little ornament with a lute or a guitar or something. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so it's stitched on 14 count perforated paper. And here's where I got I worked on it two days. So made a lot of good progress in those two days. You can see that there's like little strips attached to it. That's Velcro, so I can Attach it to my scroll frame. Don't worry, I'm not rolling it, uh, but it, it just makes it just tall enough to like, you know, attach to the bar, to the scroll rods. So compared to um, the other angel ornament I did last year, Gabriella, this stitched up like at least twice as fast because I can do it two-handed and much more fun to stitch too. So I did the bottom half of the chart basically. Her uh, skirt and her petticoat and the bottom of her wings and her blue ribbons and then the bit you see in the top half the blue is the sleeve the, the sleeves and the the red is the top of her dress so I will work on this again in July and give it like a full week hopefully I can finish it that would be fun I, I definitely do want to finish it this year so that's it for new starts and then I'll get into my whips so I worked on the, the whips like an hour or two each for the most part um, here is Mask of Colors Quick Stitch by Heaven and Earth Designs. So I worked on this column here. It was mostly stitched, but there were some things missing. So I pulled like 20 um, skeins of 20 different colors and filled in all the missing holes. There are a few like little holes left, but uh, it's just like three stitches, so pretty insignificant. And I am happy with uh, what I did in an hour. I stitched most of the bottom part there, that bottom block. So I will work on this next month during Wine and Whips. I call this pattern confetti-tastic, so it definitely qualifies as a, a wine. And it's stitched on 22 count Lugana, full cross, two over one. If I could do it again, I would do it on 18 count <laughs> because it is such a small piece. It's just like a, a hundred square, so. But I'm too far into it now. So. I'll work on it in June. My official goal for this year is to finish like three quarters of the chart. So that would be like around here. Um, but I don't know. I may go farther. It would be nice to finish this. I'm just I'm kind of tired of having it as a whip, you know. I started it, I think, in 2007 or 2009. I don't know. A long time ago. <laughs> and then I guess I'll show you my two that I pulled from my UFO pile. <laughs> So the first one is the Dimensions Gold Stocking called Snowman and Friends. I will insert a pick. Here is my previous um, progress. What I did during Mania is I stitched this little like glove portion here and then the, the beginning of the broom. So that took like an hour <laughs> and uh, I'm in no hurry with this one. I started it for my son after he was born, but then I realized that it was just so much work. So I did a felt applique one instead and he enjoys that. So we'll let him use that for a few more years. And maybe when he asked me, mommy, why don't I have a cross stitch stocking like you and daddy? Then I'll finish it. <laughs> no rush. And then my other UFO was another Dimensions Gold kit. This is the uh, Autumn Fairy. I will insert a kick. And this is stitched on 16 count. Oh yeah, this one was eight. The stocking is 18 count white Ada, sorry. This one is 16, like light blue Ada. And 
and uh, I, during Mania, I spent several hours on it. I worked on this blue, like, wrap business here, and I did more of the dress, and I did her arm. <clears throat> so, I had a hard time with it, though, because the, the fabric itself is very stiff, and it's just kind of stressful on the hand stitching. I think what I do, what I'm going to do before I work on this again is soak the fabric and see if I can soften it up some. So, we'll see. <laughs> The reason why this is a UFO is because I just, I took it out because I needed a project to stitch on the go and, you know, being a kit, it was easy to just grab and take with me and, but I don't really have space for it in my rotation at the moment. I'm working on Celtic Autumn and how many like Celtic, I mean, how many Autumn like lady fairy type things do I want in my rotation? So maybe after I finish Celtic Autumn, I can give this a spot in my active rotation because I do really love the pattern and I, I would do want to stitch it and finish it someday. Now for my more active whips. So the first one that I worked on was Siren and Shipwreck. And she is they, she is all ready for beads and I, I started beading. So I did some beading in the tail. You, you can see two types of beads. There's the dark gray ones and the white. Well, they're actually light blue, but they look kind of white here. I did the dark gray ones with the half cross and the white ones with the full cross just because they're bigger and I thought they looked better attached you know, straight up and down. Worked on this for two hours. Had a lot of fun. Can't wait to like feed her some more. I may work on her in July or August. I, I will try to finish her this year, certainly. So pretty. I did a conversion for the hair. So she stitched on 32 count uh, Belfast in the sea glass colorway, hand dyed by staff, and it, this is just a lovely fabric to stitch on. I look forward to getting my hands on some more fabric hand dyed by Stephanie Bishop, so. <laughs> Let's see, I worked on The Castle by Teresa Wensler for one hour. I will insert a pic. And what I did during Mania is I stitched this here and this tower business here that took an hour not very much stitching but it was a lot of fractionals in there and a lot of blends so not bad I guess <laughs> it was like four different uh, colors well maybe eight when you consider each of them were blends so yeah unfortunately I didn't get to share it during my vlog because my video clip got corrupted but uh, you're seeing it now so this is stitched on 28 count Cashel and the Castle View colorway by Silk Weaver. I really like it. Sort of a blue, white, you know, splashy thing. It suggests like uh, water and sky, which is what I'm going for. So I will work on this next month during Wine and Whips. It qualifies for wine because, well, it's a Teresa Wensler pattern, let's be real. <laughs> Chock full of fractionals and blends. So definitely a wine. <laughs> I'll be working on this upper castle portion here and then if I finish that I'll start back stitching the rocks so we'll see. I'll probably have to, my goal is to you know do the two things I just mentioned this year so I may have to work on it again even after the week I give it during Wine and Whips. So next is the 12 Days of Christmas by Joan Elliott. Here's what the, the pattern looks like and I'm stitching this on 32 count white with silver sparkle by Fabric Flare Even Weave. I think it's 100% cotton. Very soft fabric, but the sparkle business is a joke. So if you're looking for sparkle, just buy like Western fabric. At least this one doesn't really have much of any. So during Mania, I worked on this block. I added some of the, the blue sky that's around the partridge in the pear tree, specifically around the tree that the partridge is sitting in. <laughs> So that was an hour, two different colors of blue, and I will work on this again the first weekend in June. I will attempt to finish that block with the partridge in the pear tree and maybe get started on this next block, which is the swans, the seven swans swimming. So this project is coming along, but probably not as fast as I would like. The problem is mainly that I'm just working on one um, weekend a month, and Sometimes I have a lot of other demands on my time on the weekend, so not really that many hours stitching. So what I'm going to do is give it a full week of effort in July, and we'll see how far I get. And maybe I can get it close to finish. That would be nice. So there will be, um, well, there's 12 blocks in all, so. <laughs> 
I've done five, so I have seven more to go. And I hope I can finish it this year. We'll see. And then, last but not least, I have The Maiden and the Unicorn by Vermillion. I will insert a pic so you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the whip. So what I did during Mania is I worked on this bottom border here. Put in a few more of the colors in the border. The middle blue and some of the green. And I didn't really get very far in an hour. That's because this thing is chock full of fractionals. So for that reason, it will be part of Wine and Whips. So I'll give it a full week of, uh, of effort then. And I do think that I will be able to finish this bottom border, uh, no problem. And then I'll go back to working on the, the dress. And then at some time later in the year, I'll have to work on this border up to the halfway point. So you can see the halfway point over there. Same. I'll do the same on the other side. My goal is to finish the bottom half of the piece this year. I'm not going to like worry about the back stitching though, and there is a lot. But, uh, I guess next year I'll have to do a lot of back stitching. But it is a lovely pattern, and it's it has a companion piece, which is St. George and the Dragon. So I would like to stitch both of them or finish both of them rather, and hang them together. But uh, no promises when. <laughs> this is stitched on 36 count white Edinburgh, antique white Edinburgh, which is really the problem with something like this with so many fractionals, it would have been better to use 28 count fabric, but uh, I didn't know that at the time. So, And it's too, I'm too far into it to restart it now. And I'll have to stitch St. George and the Dragon on the same fabric because, you know, I want them to be the same size. <laughs> so, yeah. It is really pretty. It's just a pain to stitch. I mean, the main pattern is no problem. There's a few fractionals in it, but the, the border is just mainly mostly fractionals. So I'll get back to that you know, next month during Wine and Whips. So that's it for Mania. And I guess my general thoughts on Mania is that uh, I'm glad I participated. It was a lot of fun. You know, it was, it was different for me. I don't normally rotate that often. I don't normally start things that frequently. So. It was a lot of fun, but I am glad that it was just like two weeks and now I'm back to my normal thing just because I'm not, I'm not really feeling the serial starting. <laughs> so that brings me back to the year starts and I am doing 16 new starts this year of which I've already done 11 and I am changing my plans though for the remaining five. So I will be doing, the rest of my new starts will be small to medium unless I finish a large one then I may feel justified in starting a, another large one. I just feel right now I've got, well, if we take my UFOs out of the equation, the fall fairy and the snowman and friends, I've got 13 active. And that includes Merlin and Arthur, which I didn't work on during Mania because I couldn't find my uh, embroidery hoop. But uh, I do intend to work on him next month during Wine and Whips. I haven't touched him since, I think, 2007, so <laughs> that's definitely a UFO. But I just feel like I've got so many projects now, you know, 13 active, that's a lot. And a few unactive, you know, to be real about it. <laughs> so, you know, 15 in all, and it's just, I'm kind of a, well, I'm definitely a control freak, just ask my husband. <laughs> And I'm kind of compulsive about stuff, and I just feel like I have so many projects, and it's kind of like out of my control. It takes up so much space, and I had to start that binder of patterns, and I need to figure out some better storage for my whips, because what I do is I just, I roll them up, and I put them on a shelf in a cabinet, and now that I, the shelf is just like bulging. <laughs> so I need, I need to like organize them, put them in bags or something. I don't know. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just like, do some very tall, narrow tote bags that I can stick a few of my uh, rolled up fabrics into with like a drawstring top or something. So, yeah, but I just, I think my sweet spot is like maybe 10 whips and that would include the UFOs. So my plan for the year is to finish 12 and so far I've done five. So I'm trying to keep up with the average of one per month. And I have a few that are pretty close to finish, including like Air Goddess and Siren and Shipwreck, so I'm not doing bad. And I have some smalls that won't require too much to finish, like the Angelina Ornament and Dancer. And then I have a few like large projects, which 
I'm pacing myself along, but I definitely intend to finish them this year. So I think I'll be able to finish 12, but hopefully I can get my whip count down to like 10 or so, including repos by the end of the year, because that's just more of like my sweet spot, I think, like 10 to 12 around there. So now I'm going to get into my stitchy haul. So I did place an order with Brooks Books when she had her 50% off sale. I got a PDF pattern of Four Witches, which I will insert here. And then I also got a few things in the mail from Brooks. So this is the Spirit of Evergreen, lovely like green angel. And the Spirit of Mrs. Claus, which I think is so fun. Like you always see like Santa, but you don't exactly see a whole lot of Mrs. Claus in cross stitch. So I may start one of these this year as you know, this is definitely a small project. We'll see. And then I ordered from eBay. I got this Buttons and Beads Firehouse the wreath button that's pretty cool and through the woods with a little dog button sleigh ride type thing so these are the last of the i bought i have 12 of these in all now so i have enough and i will be playing with the layout and figuring out how i want to stitch it starting next year in 2017. and then also from that same ebay seller i got this the maidens and unicorns two by Mirabilia. I already have one, so I'm planning to stitch them all together. And then one piece of fabric across. This eBay vendor, it's called um, Vallego Sales. If you're in the United States, um, it's pretty cool. They do like, they routinely have like 25 to 30% off um, sales off retail. And then they usually have a deal. If you, if you buy like two or three things, you get free shipping. So that's not a problem. <laughs> And then I went to my LNS and I got this one, the Ireland Santa by Mill Hill, Celtic Santa collection. I thought this one was really cute and I do have a lot of Irish heritage in me, so that will be fun to stitch. And this one, the, the Crowns of the Kingdom by Rosewood Manor. This is my first uh, Rosewood Manor pattern. I've seen this verse in some patterns that I really like. It, it goes, in my little kingdom of stitches that cross, I am the queen of the needle and boss of the floss. But none of the patterns that include that verse are really my style. So I might put that on the bottom of this one. I don't know. And this one is stitched all in rainbow gallery, petite treasure braid, different colors. So that's a lovely metallic to stitch with. And that will be a lot of fun to stitch. The pattern is huge though. I mean, you can tell by looking at it. It's pretty darn big. <laughs> And then I got something from Facebook, uh, Glenda Place Sleepy Hollow by Cheryl A. Granda. Very cool pattern. It says, in a grave lies the horseman, his head is at his side, be brave enough to take it, and again by night he will ride. So I love this, but I may wait a few years before I start it because I think it's kind of a sophisticated, you know, Halloween pattern, and my son is so little yet, so I don't want to put anything too scary, you know, up in terms of Halloween decor. So that's it for my haul, and my plans for, you know, the coming weeks are to work a little bit more on Air Goddess. Maybe I can finish her. I mean, if I don't finish her before the end of May, I'll certainly try to fit her in somewhere in June, and then June starts with the the wine and whip stitch along over on Stitch Mania. So I do have several projects that qualify as wine projects. <laughs> and I I intend to give them each like a week of effort. So that will be the uh, Maiden and the Unicorn, the Castle by Teresa Wensler, and my two paids, the Massac Pillars Quick Stitch and the Mer Merlin and Author Full. So that will be fun. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to be able to make a lot of good progress. I'm not sure which one I'll work on first. Maybe the, um, the Maiden the Unicorn, maybe. I think I'm feeling that one, so we'll see. <laughs> and what else in June? Well, I may do a little bit of framing and try to film a framing tutorial. For Mother's Day, my husband got me this cool, like, um, head mount thing for my iPhone so I can <laughs> try to film that way. And it takes a little practice getting used to, though, so we'll see. I am really looking forward to uh, filming that tutorial because I feel, I think DIY framing is, like, so empowering when you know you can do it yourself for a reasonable price and 
I would love to like, you know, enable a lot of other people to do that. So it'll be fun to create that tutorial. And I guess that's about it for my stitching. So if that's what you came for, thank you for watching. Thanks to everyone who subscribes and comments and gives me the thumbs up. I love you all. And I can see you all my floss tube friends. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh, meet in real life. Some of us someday. <laughs> so happy stitching everyone. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. If you're interested in my knitting, I will do a short segment now on the sweater that I'm wearing. So the pattern for this sweater, which is a pullover, is in the Debbie Bliss Spring Summer 2009 Debbie Bliss magazine. And it's the original pattern was, it's called the Yoke Detail Sweater, and it was knit in Debbie Bliss silk. But I use Zitron Kogan, which is like a cotton silk microfiber blend. And it's like a light DK sport weight yarn. I knit the sweater on US sixes for a gauge of six stitches per inch. And I used about 850 yards of it for the 35 inch size. As for mods, well, I'll give you a better view. So just like a little summer sweater thing type. And like a t-shirt kind of with the back view. As for mods, I did, um, I added an inch to the bottom because uh, as written, it was just too short. <laughs> no interest in bearing my belly. <laughs> and I did short row bust shaping. You can see those diagonal stitches there. And I shortened the sleeves. I was running short on yarn and I just did like, I casted the sleeve on provisionally at the underarm and basically knit a few inches till I liked it. And luckily I had enough yarn to match on the other side. It took uh, a while to knit, about six or seven weeks which is a long time for a little thing like this, but at the time I was busy uh, packing up to move and <laughs> preparing to turn my old place into a rental, so I <laughs> didn't really have a whole lot of knitting time, but it kept me sane. <laughs> and another mod I did was I did like a little garter lace thing on the hem because as written, it's and on the neck as well, on the, the sleeves. As written, it's just a, a rolling hem, and I don't like that, so. <laughs> and um, my favorite part is definitely the, the yoke detail, so I'll get close so you can see. It's like leaves and bottles and or flower petals. A lot of fun to knit, a lot of visual interest, and I like the color too, like a light, nice light peach color. So even though I knit it back in 2012, I didn't actually get it into my wardrobe until last year, 20, 2015. I haven't really worn it all that much, but... I do like it, so hopefully I'll get more wear out of it uh, this year. Although, I don't know. We didn't really have much of the spring. It was just like raining, raining, raining. And now it's 90 degrees outside, so <laughs> not really great for uh, knit knitwear. <laughs> anyway, so that's my knitting, and uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye!